Hey guys, a little video I wanted to do to talk about the recently released Luminar Neo photo editing software. And in particular, I wanted to talk about whether this is useful for somebody like myself, who is a landscape photographer. Uh, so we're gonna be looking at the most recent release, the 1.0 release, and looking at how useful it is or isn't for tweaking your landscape photographs, getting the most out of them and whether it's an alternative to a full-blown suite package from somebody like Adobe with Photoshop. So without further ado, let's get onto the Mac and run through some situations and do some test edits and see what this software is capable of. Hey guys, so this is the opening screen of Luminar Neo. This is the catalog screen. There is a file manager built into this software, but it's fairly rudimentary uh, and not really the focus of the software. This is all about the editing. Now, the main thing with Luminar Neo, what the developers of the software, Skylum, have really been gunning for lately is this AI photo editing, you know, using machine learning to leverage the power of computers so they train it on photographs, teach it various scenarios, and hopefully simplify and speed up the whole process of photo editing. And before we get too far into this, I would just like to point out that whilst this software will open raw files, it can edit them in that sense. Uh, I've got an image here from my Fujifilm X-T4, which is a raw photo. It's not a raw photo editor in the same sense that Lightroom is, where you get a sidecar file. When you've finished your edits in Luminar Neo and you export them, you're exporting them as a bitmapped image. That's an important distinction to make. It'll open your raw files fine, but it's not a raw editor in the sense that something like Capture One or Adobe Lightroom is. So here's an image. Now I should add that this image in particular, I don't actually have the raw file for this anymore. I had a load of images lost to a hard drive failure a while back, but it's the first one I thought of with these power lines in. So this is just the preview image. So it's a quite a low res JPEG. You can find these new AI based tools under the erase tab here. And as you can see, we've got remove power lines and remove dust spots. So here's my power lines over on the left here. Let's click the button and see how it does. So let's click it. Okay, so there's our edit. And as you can see, it's done a pretty damned sensational job. I can't see any lingering traces of the power lines in there at all, like nothing. And I have to say, you, would, you can do this in Adobe Photoshop uh, and you can do it in Lightroom to a certain extent, more, more really with Photoshop, but it's a real pain in the ass. All right, so that's the power line removal. Let's move on to this dust spot removal. So I'll hop back into the catalog and I've got this beautiful portrait of my lovely visage. Let's click the remove dust spots and see if it cleans up all these. And as you can see, hey presto, they're gone. Now I said I wanted to talk about this software in terms of landscape photography. So let's look at a specific example of a raw landscape photo image and see how we can use Luminar Neo to uh, process that image. So here in my catalogue, I've got this landscape shot I took down on the Shoalhaven River, and we will test out some of the scenarios. So we'll click the Edit tab. And the first thing I wanted to talk about was actually not an AI stuff. It was this Develop tab, which is your basic edits. So if you've used Adobe Lightroom, you'll be extremely familiar with these. You've got your basic exposure, contrast, highlights, and shadows. You've got your black and white points, tweaking contrast, etc. You've got a tone curve, and you can edit the tone curve based on the whole color space or on the red, green, and blue color spaces. You've got color modifications, so you can wang up the saturation and the vibrance, uh, you know, or tweak the, uh, the color balance to your heart's content. You've got a sharpness tab, You've got noise reduction and you've got your optics. So here we've got some auto defringing, lens distortion, all that kind of stuff. So for instance, you know, your very basic edits in something like Lightroom, you'd drop the highlights down to pull back uh, the, what's going on in the highlights there, anything that's blown up and you 
wang up the shadows, which is going to make these bushes pop a little bit more. And we can tweak the white point slightly, push that higher up into the top end there and drop the blacks. And if it's looking like this is a fairly unsophisticated kind of tool uh, and you're used to the new AI based masking uh, tools that you get in the most recent version of Adobe Lightroom, then I should point out that you can mask these as well. All right, so the whole point of this software is that I suppose they're aiming it at people who aren't too fussed about spending a long time sat there editing their photos. They're more than happy to take a few shortcuts and let the software carry it away and speed the whole process up. And the enhance tab in here in Luminar Neo is a great example of that. So it looks like a pretty simple slider, this the accent tab, but it affects about eight or nine different uh, aspects of the image, the shadow, the highlights, uh, saturation, exposure, all sorts of stuff. Basically uses uh, machine learning to work out which parts of the image to apply those changes to. So let's just turn it all the way up and see what it does. And as you can see, it's got some contrast in the sky, it brought the shadows. It's uh, removed quite a lot of the, um, uh, the sort of the white, a reflective haze on the water here. If I turn it on and off, you can see what it's done. So off and on. Now the Sky Enhancer tool works in much the same way and you'll see here the uh, AI machine learning. So it knows what is sky and what is land. So let's turn this up to full so we can see it more dramatically. So as you can see, we've got increased saturation, brightness and vividness, a bit of dehaze. And also it looks like it's done a bit of tweaking to the white and black points to really make that sky pop. So next AI tool is structure. Uh, and as you might imagine, this is about sharpening the image, uh, but it's AI based. So as you can see, when we turn that up to full, we've got an, like an HDR style image, but you do not have to turn it up to 100. Let's drop that right back. Uh, and just use something quite modest, something in the 15 to 16 range, something like that. That looks looking pretty nice. I'm using a relatively modest 2019 iMac, an Intel iMac, uh, and it's running really quite nicely on here. All right, next tool is the Relight tool. And again, this is something that Skyland will be making quite a lot of noise about. They're quite proud of this. If you've got a, a recent smartphone, you'll know that they use some depth mapping in that when they take a photograph so that it knows what's near and what's far away from a computational point of view. Uh, and this does something similar, but without the light map. So for instance, I've turned up this brightness near, it should just increase this foreground area here intelligently. So let's try it. And if we turn that on and off, you can see it's only increasing this very dark area at the bottom of the image. And similarly, if we do the brightness far, let's turn that up. And as you can see, it's affecting everything uh, sort of from the midline back. And we can affect that depth range, of course, with this slider here, so we can decide how far and back the near and far is. So if I turn the depth up to 74, for instance, you can see it moving all the way back. Just wanted to point out that the crop tool up here has an AI symbol next to it. That's right, it's an AI based crop tool. So it kind of understands about the images. Now I have to say, I've been testing this a little bit and it seems to be primarily focused on portraits. So it will do an intelligent crop of a person. I don't think it does such a good job cropping things like landscapes. Notice also that we've got this horizon alignment tool. If you're one of those anal retentive folks who hate seeing wonky horizons in landscape photographers, I must admit it does kind of bug me too, not too massively, but a little bit. You can click the horizon alignment button and as you can see, it's done a really, really nice job of lining up that horizon. Okay, so one of the really cool things I like about this software is this edits tab which is basically a history of your edits. And you can go back and tweak any of these. Um, if you decide that you went overboard on the color, for instance, 
can open that up and tweak the changes or you can remove it completely by clicking the little trash bin icon we've got our structure tab here and if I think oh well you know I was a bit heavy handed with that I want to bring it down a bit we can just come back in here drop the slider down to a more sympathetic setting and you can toggle these changes on and off with the eye icon just to see what it's doing I'm not really into these kind of heavy Instagram kind of fantasy edits where you kind of put dramatic elements in a photo. I like a more natural sort of a landscape photograph, but there's some cool stuff in here and I'm going to show you how to use that now in Neo. So we've also got these quite cool sky replacement features. Uh, I think Skyland were the first guys to bring this to market. I know you can do it in the latest version of Adobe Photoshop and certainly in Lightroom and stuff, but uh, I'm pretty sure these guys, particularly with the AI sky replacement, they were the first ones to do it. And so for instance, if we wanted some dramatic colourful sky, I can click this once. And as you can see, it's done a very effective job of picking out what is sky and what is landscape. And there is no haloing at all on this. It's really, really sophisticated stuff. And notice also that it has completely relit the foreground. So if I undo that, let's turn that on and off. Can you see what it's done down here as well? How it's darkened up this bottom portion of the screen completely. So it fits in more with the sky that we've replaced here. Again, this is not something I would ever use. I don't consider this landscape photography. You know, this is something entirely different. There's a place for this kind of stuff and extremely useful for people like real estate photographers. It's certainly not something that I'd ever use uh, and sort of put out and say, hey, everyone, here's a landscape photograph I've taken because it isn't, you know, it's a fantasy image uh, and we're into the realms of digital art here and not landscape photography. But still, it's really neat. I'm just going to undo that sky change there. We've also got these AI based atmosphere tools. So if you wanted to make the scene all foggy, you could do that. Just Crank it up and hey presto, we've got a nice foggy scene. Now if you're after that uh, Instagram look, uh, I found the matte tool here to be pretty effective for that kind of crushed blacks look. That's very trendy at the moment. If I turn this up, you'll see what it does. Creates that kind of Polaroid-y looking, very, very Instagram style image. I'm not a big fan of those heavy Instagram edits, but if that's your bag, then this uh, software will certainly let you get that. I'll just undo that. One of the ones I did quite like was this mystical tab, which kind of, from my point of view, it kind of emulates the autumn effect. It gets pretty close, and you'll see what I mean if I turn this up. You get that kind of soft autumn effect okay so the last thing to say about this is that skylum have of course they have the original luminar which was a straight photo editor with a few bells and whistles and then they brought out um, last year or the year before last they brought out luminar ai which was kind of basically just about applying templates and stuff to your photographs and luminar neo is a kind of a combination of luminar and Luminar AI. So you get the photo tools and you get the templates uh, and they're in this presets tab over here. And now I say templates. So what these are, these are AI based single click processing tools. So for instance, we've got a sunsets tab here. Let's see what we come up with. So we've got dream film. So I'm going to click, this is a one click deal. And it's telling me it's going to remove all my previous edits. That's fine. We were just mucking around. And as you can see, we've got this really kind of drenched orange um, look. Let's give this Toscana a go. And so as you can see with Toscana, it hasn't just done a few edits. It's completely replaced my sky with this uh, and added this kind of very purple palette and hue to everything so when you buy this software you get a ton of presets with it and you can download more and there are various uh, sort of celebrity photographers who've released preset packs all right guys so there you go that's a quick rundown of luminar neo from my perspective from a landscape photography sensibility there's a lot of very clever stuff going on in the software the question is is it useful uh for somebody who wants to not pay you know a thousand bucks a year to adobe for the creative suite uh, or the cheaper photography package they don't want to be on subscription just want to pay a one-off fee 
Uh, and the simple truth is that yes, yeah, so it's perfectly adequate for editing uh, your images with the caveat I said before that it's not a raw editor in the sense it's not creating sidecar files. Once you export your edits from this, they're baked in. You know, so that's the difference. And if that's fine with you and you don't want to pay a subscription, then I think Luminar Neo is a great bit of software with some incredibly innovative and very useful tools in it. I can see myself using some of the stuff in it for very specific tasks, such as that power line removal and the dust spot removal. Those are really nice and perhaps some of the, the relight uh, effects and so for me it's kind of worked like a, a plug-in effectively for Lightroom and since it only costs around 70 odd bucks or something quite a useful thing and similar price to something you'd pay for a plug-in anyway. Alright guys so that's it for this video hope you enjoyed it are you a fan of that heavy retouching style that kind of digital art style of things or do you like to keep it nice and simple with a few tweaks to the highlights and shadows in Lightroom. Let me know in the comments below. And as always, hit the bloody like button and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of this content. Until next time, guys, see you later.